What's going on guys, welcome back to our Let's Play here on the Bedrock Edition and as you can see we're still over here at the Pentaspawner and I've got an absolute ton of uh, zombies I've not got my second account up in so it's just the uh, three zombie spawners that are active at the moment but I thought I'd show you the sort of changes that I made here so I've got an uh, item sorting system all in place and I've also got a switch which is this thing over here and I need to get rid of these guys to be able to show you but as you can see, while I've been tidying up this area, I have managed to get to level 84. Just doing the work around here and just coming over here every now and again to clear them all out. So let's just quickly get rid of all of these guys. But we are still getting the odd baby zombie making it through, but because we've got it half slab, there's no way of them actually getting out anymore. So they usually piggyback off of the bigger ones and make their way down here. Which is unfortunate considering they have to make it through three of our sort of fire corners, so we're not getting a ton of them, but we're getting like the odd one that is just like there, the street the one there. And then we quickly clear these guys, come on, just so I can show you the sort of uh, switch that I've got for it, because I was thinking about putting a switch to actually deactivate all the mob spawners by having a redstone lamp system. And I thought rather than having to run redstone wire into every single spawner to be able to just turn on lights, I thought it was easier just to create an auto killing system, which then involved me having to put in a triple block block swapper, which was actually a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. I was looking at different designs of block swappers and they was extremely like sort of difficult to do in the concept to switch three blocks with another three blocks and all of them worked on a system that you push a button or step on a pressure plate and none of them really worked the way that I wanted them to work so I've just got a lever here so we've got auto kill down manual kill is up we're on manual kill at the moment but we're gonna need these guys to stop dropping for a second <laughs> which ain't gonna happen at any time soon so if we uh, switch to drown zombies to start activating then it will start grouping them all up so it will stop them up there which means we'll get around about a good 10-15 second break in between the next batch coming through. Well, let's just get rid of these ones. Now there's a couple of things that I want to do in this episode. One is that I'm keeping track of a timer now because I'm going to try to make sure my episodes are 25 minutes or less because I said it around about three or four episodes ago and it was a case where my episodes just keep on getting longer uh, unintentionally it's just I seem to waffle on and time seems to just go a lot quicker than oh come on would you stop dropping than I expected it to so ow is that a baby one seriously so they are still getting out somehow. I think they might be getting out through the extended pistons at the back. So I may have to try to block that off in some way. Which we probably can actually. But yeah, so we've got the auto kill down. So if we switch that, it will switch these half slabs over for magma blocks. So then they'll drop down and just instantly die on magma blocks. Now is there a way that we can stop these guys from getting in? Um, let me grab some stone blocks and we just do that so when these pistons are extended the baby zombie shouldn't be able to escape through the back there we should fix that issue but that's our auto kill system it's a uh, quite a simple block swapper so it sort of runs around here to an observer which changes it into a monostable circuit for the pistons in the middle so the piddle the piddle the middle pistons will retract allowing the set above them to push down the half slabs or the set below them to push up the half slabs and I've got one on an inverted line and one on a normal line so when we put the lever down we've got a powered line which leads da -da 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 -da, down there and then we've got a powered line that leads here this one's our direct line which activates the bottom pistons and then we've got an inverted one which comes nope that's our zombie killer thing is our inverted one. Oh, our inverted one is the one that comes up to here. So these then lead to redstone torches and when it's active these ones will go off which means the top pistons will be retracted rather than extended. So it just works on the simple lever switch rather than a button and it's a lot more simpler. Now the item sort that we got in is just the bog standard one 
It's very simple, hundreds of thousands of tutorials on it. At the very back of it, we've got a automatic dispensing system to get rid of all of the junky armor uh, tridents because we don't currently need them. But I have got a lever on the hopper here in case we do want to stockpile some stuff in case we want to get some tridents. But as you can see, that's all. We'll just go through and just get disposed of. So we've got our Nautilus shells building up. We've got gold building up. Then we've got our iron. Uh, some arrows, some bones from the skellies, and then we've just got an absolute ton of rotten flesh. So, all happy days there. Uh, for today, I think that's going to do it over in this area, because I still need to work out what I want to do over there. I actually want to do a mural of a drowned zombie, but the closest brick type that I could find to match them was the prismarine. And I didn't really like the way that looked. So let me, uh, I'm going to get rid of all of this junk and I will meet you back over at our man cave area. Okay, now that we're back over at our man cave area, I've got another couple of things I actually want to do in this episode. One is that each episode now, I actually want to do an achievement because we've got through quite a few of them and I'd like to actually carry on getting them, but the ones that I haven't done are usually very very obscure ones uh crosswalker elytra uh i think we'll do power of furnace with lava <laughs> i think that one's probably the most simplest that we've got on our list but where have we got lava and um where can we find lava quickly I'm trying to think okay let me grab a bucket of lava Okay, I just went down to my uh, speed mining area, I grabbed the bucket of lava, hopefully this does the trick. If we just throw you into there, um, I think we're going to need to grab something to smell, what can we smell? Have we got any iron? Yeah, we do. Let's grab a stack of iron, throw that into there, and thunderstorm. That was, uh, I was expecting an achievement sound, not a thunderstorm sound. Do you think that we should go out and play with some creepers with our... Uh, have we got a channeling one here? Some breaking, impaling, or a... got channeling there. We should have our creeper charger one. Um, I want to put away these rails as well. I'm wondering why I didn't get the achievement for powering that furnace with uh, lava. Unless it's just being a little bit slow. Oh yeah, we've got a, one of them shady water blocks as well from where I was clearing out kelp. Um, yeah, let's quickly go outside see what's going on because that sounds absolutely nuts. Okay, we're outside, it's raining, it's dark, but I think the thunder... Oh no, the thunder's are still going. But we can actually use this instead of rockets to get about now because it's raining. So let's see if we can't find a creeper. Come on. Where are all the mobs at? This area's usually littered with mobs. Okay, we've got some there. Come on, where's a creeper when you want one? They're always there when you start building and you don't want them, but as soon as you start looking for one because there's a thunderstorm, not a single one in sight. Okay, let me fly around a little bit, see if I can't find a creeper for us to go play with. Okay, we've managed to see the creep. We've managed to see? I've managed to spot a creeper. He's just over here. So... Let's uh, see if we can't supercharge this guy. Oh, oh, oh. And I was getting attacked by two drowned at the same time, it's not good. Um, get my bow. Get rid of the drowned. Okay, this may be a good test to see if the drowns drop their heads. Okay, he died. Did he drop a head? No, apparently drowns do not drop their head. Well, that was a waste, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to have a hop around see if I can't find another creeper to wreck more of my landscape with. 
Okay, we found another creeper. Come on, before the thunderstorm ends, let's get him supercharged. Oh. Okay, got supercharged. Now let's find a mob to try to grab the head of. Um Zombie villagers, you reckon that they'll drop their head? You know what, this is just gonna be experimentation day, isn't it? It should count as a zombie, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Uh, we need to get him low on health first of all, though, without killing him. Um, get a few more hits. Ah, oh, I think it's like nine or ten hits before they die. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine. And then we should be able to take him to the charge creeper. Come on, Mr. Creep. Do you have to light the creeper yourself? Oh, that's 85 levels down the drain. I had an ender pearl in my hand and... Oh, it's just, hmm. oh, okay, let's see where we respawn. Oh, we're back over here, it's fine. Um, can we sleep? Get rid of the rain now. <laughs> Considering that didn't go too well for us. Oh my god, 85 levels, but you know what, we've got a penta spawner, it's not too much of a bother. Uh, I didn't believe that you caused that much damage, I know that I probably took a little bit of damage when I threw the ender pill, and I honestly have no idea where I actually was. I wasn't too far away, was I? Uh, I was definitely within eye shot of this area. Uh, quickly before that zombie decides to get on the case. Okay guys, it was about 4.73.10. I just saw on the video I was on the complete wrong side of my town from where it happened. But it's actually quite far away so I don't have to worry about the uh, explosion damage too much. Now, let's see if we get all of our stuff. Uh, we've got a zombie head so do you, do you think that was worth it? 85 levels for a zombie head. Uh, I sure hope that it was worth watching because uh, I feel a little bit demoralised from that one. I did not want to you like lose 85 levels due to a uh, charge creeper, but that's what happens when you accidentally have ender pills equipped to your hotbar without remembering that you have them. Uh, let's quickly whack on our clothes. Okay, now uh, the fun and games are out of the way. We've uh, I was actually planning on doing a quick sort of enchanting session on camera, but it looks like that that plan is out the window and I am... I've got both my picks, got my axe, got both my tridents, got my shovel. I have not got my food uh, and my bow, which is both up there. Okay, happy days. Because there's no one going to be able to run back off voice. Yeah, so, like I was saying, there's a couple of things. I want to make sure that the episode's not running too long, and uh, sort of diversions and stuff like that. I just, I can't help myself sometimes that it just sort of uh, extends the video length without me realising. But the thing that I actually want to work on today, other than getting killed, like I said, I was planning on doing like an enchant in sort of time lapsing, so we enchant like a bunch of books and get maybe a new set of armour, but... That plan is well and truly out the window because I decided that it was fun to go play in a thunderstorm. So yeah, you go me. Uh, as you can see over here, we have been growing and sorting out a load of... Can I please get my ender pearls back on my hot bar? Because I actually want to use them this time. We've got a load of like trees and stuff growing up around this way because I've just been harvesting them to get the materials to sort of do the area i've been putting in the hidden lighting with pumpkins all the pathways are lit up at night i'm not sure if i showed that in the last episode i'm not sure if i showed my custom tree in the last episode but i actually want to do another custom tree for today's episode now i know it sounds a little bit dull and boring really an episode focused around just one tree but the situation being is that someone commented on my entrance to our man cave said it was a very good idea and then it sort of 
made me realize that yeah at the time it was a very good idea but right now because the undead mobs sink in water uh, they can just quite casually fall straight through it without a bother so if a zombie or skelly was chasing me and I ran through here they would quite easily just walk in they may sink to the bottom there and get stuck but I, I can't see them doing that especially the drown because the drown would then swim up and out which means this is no longer safe and secure so what I am thinking of doing what was that noise someone dying okay anyway uh yeah, as I was saying, what I may do is we'll get rid of this water and then I am planning, because our oh, main cave site meant to be a sort of like secret base sort of type deal and I thought have, we're probably going to get rid of this pathway leading here and I'm probably just going to cut it off say uh, roughly about here so we can just get rid of all of that gravel leading up to the actual man cave it's meant to be like off the trails and secret and that's that's what a man cave meant to be it's meant to be an out of way place to get away from everyone and everything so we don't want it connected to the town do we silly idea so i actually want to bring this hill back down and then i want to build a quite sort of large custom tree just on the edge of this hill and then have maybe a sort of piston activated secret entrance through the tree into the man cave is what my plan is but yeah, um, hopefully it sort of works out all right. Now, let me quickly... Uh, I'm going to quickly grab another bucket of lava and put it in one of these guys. Because I think it may be a case that that bucket just... Because I've still not got the achievement come through, so I don't think it's registered it like, at all. I just don't think it's registered me using the lava bucket because straight after coal then went in it instead of the bucket remaining in it. So I'm going to quickly run down, grab another bucket of lava, throw it in one of the furnaces up top, and I'll meet you up there. Okay, we're up at the furnaces. I've got my bucket of lava. Um, I've still got this zombie head on me. We should have really got a skelly, but you know, I'll just uh, we'll put another zombie head up there for our wall. So we are going to be smelting some gold this time, rather than lava. Rather than lava, no, rather than iron. So hopefully. That does the trick now that the bucket's staying in there. So if it stays in there and it smelts an item, if we stay looking at it and then we take the item out, will that trigger it? No? No achievement? Okay, I, 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 oh, there we go. It's like it's only took her a while, but apparently you have to stay with the furnace looking at it and then get the stuff and whatnot. But yes, uh, the entrance way. I'm going to quickly get rid of this gravel and sort of smooth over the hill. Get rid of some of the outlying trees. Like, I don't know what this thing is. It's just like a stump sitting there. And then I'll bring you back for showing you how I usually, well, how I've done the custom tree over that way. So yeah, I'll see you back in a sec. Alright then guys, I've got rid of the gravel path and I've cleared out some of the trees, although we've still got some leaves which these spawn in times are an absolute joke. So I'll just quickly get rid of you because I'm probably going to need you. So, far hills there. We're obviously going to have trees surrounding the area a little bit as well. But, we want to bring so this down a little bit. want it to be at least too high so let me think uh sorry i went quiet i'm trying to work out exactly whereabouts we should try plant this tree because i'm not too sure if it's going to look too good like bang on the side of the hill but if we put it just about here and then have the sort of cave in or man cave entrance just about there but we can't make it look obvious that it's there so if we get rid of that front layer and i think we should just try planting a tree and see how we go from how big we can actually make the tree because i have no idea if this is going to work yet i've not tested any of this out um the, the way that i created the other custom tree is because we want it quite tall uh, we're going to want to plant it, say, about 
Because we're going to want the leaves going up high. So say about here. And we grab uh, saplings. Thank you. What we want to do is actually grow two of the big trees sort of back to back. So, oh, oh, I hate the lag around here. It's just, I really do hope that they fix it because it makes playing in this one area really unenjoyable at times. Uh, we want one, two, three. And then on the side of that three, let's grab some torches. Oh, one, two, three. Get rid of you, get rid of you. Um, that's actually orientated the wrong way because we want it to actually grow out the other way, don't we? One, two, three. That was my bad. Let's get rid of you. I've got a shovel. Why am I using my hand? Okay, so yeah, that should hopefully force grow a larger tree in that type direction. But we've got some bone mill to sort of speed up the process here. Save us waiting around uh, on my hotbar, please. Thank you. Hopefully this works. Okay, well, that is a rubbish tree. Let's try that one again. All right, then, guys, I've managed to get somewhat of a fairly decent tree, I think, in my opinion. Like from afar, it doesn't look too bad, and it sort of blends in well, but I think it'll blend in a lot more once we've got a lot more greenery and a lot more larger trees on that sort of scale dotted about. But it doesn't seem like a big neon sign, this is where the man cave entrance is. Now, I've not done any of the redstone. The only situation being is that when I was growing it, um, if I make it any wider, like even at this sort of width, it looks a little bit silly when it's this short. So I've sort of, uh, I've got two sort of decisions to make. One is whether or not to actually bulldoze the entire thing and make it a lot taller, but then it will make it out of proportion for the rest of our builds in the area. Or two, I can just keep it this way, but it means that the section that we actually want to have like a sort of piston type doorway is only going to be like too wide. That's unless we manage to retract one, two, three, them four blocks as well as these front two, which I think we probably could actually. Uh, have we got our redstone gadgets out? We've not got anything out because we're never prepared, are we? No. Uh, redstone boxes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to want some sticky pistons. Just so I know what's going where. So the ones down below are going to be fairly simple because they're just going to be on a sort of inverted redstone system. So they will permanently be on being extended. But it does mean that we're then going to have to do the same for these three blocks as well. So because if we want this to remain a three-way doorway, we're going to have to do this entire section. So that's going to be one. Oh, I don't want more than one piston. Thank you. Two and three. That marks out where them blocks are going. And then uh, the top two blocks, we're going to have to retract. Oh, not that way. Really? You both decide to face downwards? Um. Can I get them facing the right way? There we go. So they're going to be pulling these two back. And then we'll probably have some pistons, say... Uh, so if they pull them back, should we then just... Hmm, I don't know whether or not to pull the entire system up. Oh yeah, no, that's what we're going to do, because that's actually one higher than what we need it, isn't it? We actually need them about this height, which means we are then going to have to have pistons pulling them back down. Which is going to be a little bit difficult, because I don't think we've got much working room up above. Yeah, that's like right at the base of the tree as well. Uh, okay, give us a second to figure out the logistics of it, otherwise I'm just going to waste your time. I'm in an RM walking around this thing. So yeah, once I've got a little system in place, I'll bring you back.
Alright, so it's been a good half hour, 45 minutes for me guys trying to work this one out. And it's quite luckily I did make that cut when I did because, yeah, it's uh, it's been a little bit difficult to try to figure out. Now, from the inside, by no means is it going to look pretty. Because situation being is that the pistons that are pulling up the pistons uh, that are holding the logs forward take up the entirety of, like, the trunk section which was a little bit hard so there's going to be a lot of patchwork that I'm going to have to sort out like I've had to tear down half of the back end of the tree just in order to get the redstone in but the way it works is that you've got a signal here which is going to be a constant where our well basically let me uh, show you this way let me turn that back off so this is it going to be in constant where we're going to have all of our wood blocks. I'm going to whack them all back out for you now so then we can see what it actually is going to look like. If I remember the placements of all the blocks that is. Uh, we had one facing down there. One facing down there. Had one facing down there. 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 I believe we then had one facing down here. And then a couple... Coming out. Oh, not there. There. I think that's how we had it. Yeah, that is how we had it. So from the front side, it looks fine. I am going to have to obviously fix up the uh, back end of it. And I've already not restarted my timer. So I honestly have no idea how long this episode is now. I'm fairly sure it's getting to about the 20 minute mark, which is... Oh, we can't even have that block there, can we? Um... We can have a half... Oh no, we can have a block there actually. Because we've got a repeater running into that. So, can I have some dirt back? Let's just see how much we can tidy this up. Uh, I don't think we want that one there. I think we might cover this section with leaves. But uh, I'll leave it open for a second while I explain to you how it all works. So, we're going to have our input which is going to be... A pressure plate probably linked up to a comparator timer just so there it remains open for a certain amount of time but basically what happens is that you'll get the input in which will then retract everything now that second retraction is that we've got an observer sorting out a monosable circuit for the pistons up above so the bottom ones are retract because we're deactivating them redstone torches and then we've got a redstone torch tower up the side here which leads to an observer block which turns the top section into a monostable circuit for the piston, so then they will extend and retract in just the yon cycle. And then obviously once the timer's done, the door will then automatically close, so this power will then finish output in. That will come down and then that will fully uh, basically extend back into its original position. And the reason why that is working is because the monostable clock that we've got set up um can I have some leaves have i got any leaves no, i think i put them all away yeah the monosable clock that we've got is working on an on and off signal so each time it receives a signal it will go on and off and then each time it unreceives that signal if that makes sense well you know how an observer works i don't really need to explain that to you do i I'm going into far too much detail than I actually have to. But um, apart from hooking this up to a pressure plate, now obviously I really do need to uh, sort of fix up how it's going to look. But on the inside, there's not much that I can do about it. It's just, yeah, the, I can like maybe, oh no, I don't even know what that was going to be done. I could do that and then can't really Actually, we could probably do one of them I'm not sure if these half slabs are important but maybe fill that in um, got a bit of room here do that I can't do nothing about that left hand side the redstone blocks is what is getting pushed up to activate these pistons here oh, I don't want to break here yeah, it's activating these pistons here, extending the logs back out into their original position. So we're going to have, like, our floor come in out about here. 
I don't know how I want to activate it yet though. Whether a pressure plate or because we can do the wooden pressure plates in all the different varieties of wood, we could probably quite easily hide it. Or I could do one that's activated by maybe a hopper dropping an item on the ground. Just so then it's like a super, super secret sort of entrance. And then that will all retract and boom, we've got a fresh looking tree again. And do you know how many times I've fallen in this water? It's not even a joke anymore, it's just... I've sort of back up to have a look to see what's going on and whatnot, and every single time I'm falling in. But I think we could like back some vines up towards the top, sort of pretty it pretty up. Yeah, sort of neaten it up a little bit. But what I'm going to do before we end this episode off is I'm going to make another quick cut here, sort out the input for it, and then from there... Um, I'm probably going to tidy it up and just show you the finished product because I think I've gone through how it works uh, quite thoroughly. Do that and it all retracts and then we just walk into our man cave and then it all close up and I'll have to have another thing here to activate or deactivate it. I may actually just put in some tripwire hooks with a tripwire going across. So then I'll just walk up to it and it will open and whatnot. But yeah, I'm going to crack on and get all of that bits and pieces done off the camera and uh, I'll bring you back. Alright then, so I've been working on sorting out the sort of activation system, the timings and whatnot. Now the system that I've chosen to go for is I've actually done the sort of hidden one where you sort of just drop an item and it will feed into a hopper minecart to then feed through to activate it. But I don't think it looked too bad. I'm actually running over there now because I wanted to grab some vines. Because I think a little bit more greenery on the like very just brown texture that's going up should uh, add just a little bit of detail. Should hopefully look some a little bit decent. Now they'll grow down and obviously when the door opens it'll sort of probably break it off a bit but uh, can we get one, say, about there? And then, so i get some on the back here as well. And some over here. Now, I did have to go up with the leaves a little bit because this one section of the redstone I couldn't hide no matter what I'd done. It's just uh, one of them things that just going to have to deal with. But I'm um, waiting for the rest of the grass to grow in. And I sort of bone milled a bit. And obviously once the area itself has all been done, like these pathways still need to be sorted out. I need to swap out like all the gravel for like cobblestone and mossy cobblestone and hidden light in. Bone mill the sides, whack a few more of the larger trees up. I've got one at the very back there. I've now got this one here and once they're dotted about you won't really be able to tell what's there. So if we sort of just run up, we grab whatever item we want, just sling it on the ground. I keep on forgetting whereabouts it is so I know that it's like dead center so just there and then that will all open up and it will let us go in more than enough time to get through now initially I did have a tripwire hook to let us back out but that was double activating the system so when I run through it would then send another pulse so it will close up and then straight away it will reopen again and then it will close again so Rather than having that, unless I wanted to jump like a sort of trap thing where I had to jump over each time I entered the base. But I've ended up just whacking a little button there on the right hand side. That will then all open up. We've got more than enough time to come out. And then it all closes up and looks very all natural again. So I'm extremely happy with the way it turned out. It's the first time I've tried doing a hidden entrance to anything whatsoever. And uh, I'm quite happy with the way that it's sent out. But hopefully time has not gone over this 25 minute mark. I'm praying to God it hasn't. Otherwise I'm going to be editing bits and pieces out. But hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. And I'll hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye bye.